Hello, I'm Rebecca Hansen, also known as Rebecca the Maths Lady. A few weeks ago, I had a week off school with COVID and I looked around at what was going on with the multiplication tables check, which is due for introduction this summer. And I ended up starting a petition on the official government site, which has already received 3000 signatures. I'm also asking teachers to sacrifice a cup of coffee somewhere and to donate the price of that cup of coffee to this fund, this Just Giving site, so that we can promote this petition on Facebook and other social media and hopefully get enough signatures to get it, requiring a formal response from Nadim Zahawi. And if we get more signatures, 100,000, then we can get this debated in Parliament and hopefully rebuild consultation in the development of education policy. The purpose of this video is to answer the key questions that I've been asked since I started the petition on record. So the 10 questions I'm going to address in this video, and you will be able to scan through it to find the question that you're looking for an answer for, are number one, what is the multiplication tables check? Two, what's wrong with the assessment? Three, who supports the assessment? Four, how has the development of this test gone so wrong? Five, what's going on with the media coverage on this? Six, why does it matter to challenge the test now? Seven, how are we going to get those required numbers of signatures to make this really count? Eight, if I donate to the Just Giving page, how will I know that my money's wisely spent? Nine, I've got another question, how do I ask it? And 10, who am I to have started this petition? So question one is, what is the multiplication tables check? Well, it's a new exam that's designed to ensure that children learn their multiplication tables properly. And it's going live this summer in year four. So nearly all our children in year four who will be either eight or nine years old when they take this test will have to take it. There will be some exemptions, particularly for children with special needs. If you want to see the full specification for this test, you want the 2018 multiplication tables check specification which is on the government website and I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. If you would like to try a sample of this test then I'm really grateful to More Than A Score, a campaign group for children in education who have created a sample version that parents and anyone else who has access to the internet can try so they can get a feel of what this test is like. Question two, what's wrong with this test? Well, we were expecting a test to check whether children are fluent with their multiplication tables or not. And that hopefully would give us some meaningful information about where children are if they're not where we'd like them to be. Now, what do we mean by fluency? What do we actually need children to be able to do? Well, at this stage, at the end of year four, we would love it if children could tackle a problem like this without not knowing their seven times table being a barrier to their progress. And that means in practice that some of their results they know instantly, some of them they've got a good sense of and are checking against neighbouring results or checking with sensible strategies. Now what's gone wrong with this test is that the architect of it didn't agree with the idea that children need to be fluent with their maths. He wanted rote recall of maths. Now that's very different because if a child's fluent with maths, if you said to them seven times 12, they might have a sense that it's 84, but they probably very quickly want to sense check in their mind that it's seven tens, which is 70, and seven twos, which is 14. So yes, that's 84. And with quite a few of their tables results, and adults do this too, it's very natural that they've got a sense of what that result is, but they want to quickly check it against neighbouring results. For something like four times 10, you just know it's 40. But for a result like nine times 12, you probably aren't instantly confident of that result and you want to just quickly sense check it. And that really doesn't matter. You can still be a great mathematician without instant certain recall of that result. Now, the architect of this test was obsessed with rote learning. So he inserted a six second guillotine on every question for inputting the answer to prevent people thinking. So for a question like seven times 12, you have to instantly know certainly that it's 84. If you're stopping to think, you're going to get that question wrong. 
And if you get a single question wrong, then you have failed the test because the only result that's reported by schools to Ofsted is how many children got full marks, 25 out of 25, for rote recalling every single fact. So if you as a viewer are thinking, maybe this test really is a good test, please go and try it yourself on a more than a score website. And while you're doing that, please think, is this really suitable for eight year olds? Now, more than a score have also created a fantastic video on YouTube of eight year olds talking about doing this test. So you can get a sense of what it's like for them. And there's a link to both the more than a score trial version of this test and their video in the description for this video. So there are really four problems with this test. The first is that it doesn't test what's actually relevant and meaningful. The second is that it will create stress for children. The third is that it will create a lot of stress for teachers. And the fourth is that it will obviously change what goes on in schools to make teachers focus on teaching rote recall rather than what actually matters, which is fluent understanding of tables, and that will damage education. Question three. Who supports this test? This test was created by a minister called Nick Gibb. He supports this test. Aside from that, I've found some teachers who've managed to get their children well prepared for this test who would now rather it went ahead than didn't because their children want the chance to show off what they can do. But they generally get it that this isn't a good test. That's just the most positive response I've managed to find among the teaching community. And I have been asking around and I've found nobody who supports this test. I'm connected across all sorts of networks in Britain and people are just looking at it in sheer horror that this is going ahead in general. Question four, how has the development of this test gone so very wrong? Well, consultation in the development of tests like this was shut down in 2010, I think it was, possibly 2011. And we had to go to court to get it reinstated. And when it was reinstated, it was a total sham. It had no impact on things like this, unless the minister wanted it to have impact, which they rarely have, and they certainly haven't in this case. So there was no consultation in the development of the test. It was the fetish of one minister who thinks that age doesn't matter, wants to return to Victorian style teaching and has done huge damage to education. It's really useful to give an example of what he's done. So for example, in a global discussion about maths teaching, teachers were discussing whether you should introduce column addition and subtraction, questions like these, age seven, eight or nine. And I had to own up that in England, we give children paper exams on questions like this when they are only six years old and they are not allowed apparatus. And that is just the fetish of this minister. And again, nobody was allowed to say anything and nobody was listened to. No one thinks that's a good idea. It's just what we have to do because he says so. And that's the context we've been living with for 12 years. And it's why the development of this test has gone so very, very wrong. So what's going on with media coverage of this test? Well, what those of us who've been looking at this for years have been waiting for is the parliamentary debate about this new exam. So normally when a new test is going to become a legal requirement in schools, there's a stage at which it goes before Parliament. There's about five or six weeks notice of this. MPs gear up to talk about it. The press get interested and there is a national debate. And that's what we've been waiting for. And it was just a few weeks ago that someone says, it's statutory, it's already a legal requirement. And we looked at it and went, well, how has that happened? And it turns out that a parliamentary process for tiny amendments to things like clarifying a date on something that's already been debated has been used to get this test through as being an amendment to key stage two sats rather than as being a new exam in its own right. And therefore, MPs never got to know about it. They never got the chance to debate it. And so the whole process whereby there's any public scrutiny of this there was no consultation, no public scrutiny, it's all fallen apart and it's never reached the media. And without any of those processes, people have been scared to stand up and talk about this because when you do talk about it, you get a whole load of abuse. Oh, you're part of the blob who just lets children do what they want. We've got rid of people like you. And anyone who is criticising this test clearly doesn't want any testing at all. 
So it's really hard to stand up and say anything when you're just overwhelmed by that culture. I'm very grateful for my local newspaper in West Cumbria, the Times and Star, they did an article on this when I sent around press releases and that helped to understand how the public are misunderstanding what's going on here. And then amazingly, Warwick Mansell, who's a top British education journalist, has now done a major article on his website. You can find it, it's Education Uncovered. You do need to pay a very, very small subscription to that website, but there's a lot of good information there. He's really done his research. But now it's up to you. You need to get this petition signed because when this gets a government response or goes to parliament for debate, which is what we really want, we'll get the coverage, not just of this test, but of the reality of consultation in education being totally abolished. And that's the deep issue that we need to challenge here. We need to rebuild consultation in education. And this takes me on to question six. Why does it matter to challenge this test now? Well, first of all, if we don't challenge it, it's going live this summer. And once it's live, these things don't get challenged. We need to challenge it before it goes live. We're working in a context where we have a new Secretary of State for Education, Nadim Zahawi. The first thing he did was to sack the minister who developed this test. Now he's in a situation where very few people around him understand why it matters to challenge this test. The Department for Education has not been a place where people who talk about the real world of maths education have thrived. And they're the people he's surrounded by, as well as the people who have big contracts with the government and far right Tories who really do believe that people like me are part of a blob that they are destined to eradicate to create a great leap forward in Britain. So we have to challenge this now. Please sign the petition. Please share the petition. Please encourage your friends to sign. And please don't have that cup of coffee. Miss out on that cake. Take a thermos flask to the park instead or something like that and donate the price of a cup of coffee to this so that we can drive engagement with this campaign. And this is not just about challenging this test. It's about challenging Nadeem Zahawi to rebuild the processes by which education policy is developed so that there is consultation and the use of evidence. We have to challenge it. We have to shout loudly that this is needed. Later this morning, I'm going to be interviewing the authors of this book, Whole School Wellbeing, the well-being of children, teachers and other people associated with and working in schools really, really matters. It's part of the new Ofsted criteria. But if there is no consultation about policy, so policy that is rolled out that's terrible for children and teachers have to implement that policy, we aren't going to get whole school wellbeing. Next question, how can we promote this petition? Well, for you, the viewer, please sign it, share it, and donate the price of a cup of coffee to this Just Giving campaign. For me, I started the petition, I'm doing this video now. I'm going to be setting up a cyclical Just Giving campaign way of funding this and getting this going, hopefully in the next week, but sometimes life just comes at me, so it might take longer than that. And then I am going to be going to the conferences for the Association of Teachers of Maths and the NEU during the Easter holiday. And I will be standing around outside giving people bits of paper, hopefully carrying a placard, taking any questions and just doing my best to promote this in ways that fit in with those conferences and don't disrupt them too much. I understand how these things work. But ultimately, this needs a life of its own. We need the media to get engaged. A lot of top people in maths education are prepared to speak to the media. I've been checking. So if you work for the media, please just contact them or please contact me and I will put you in touch with people who are prepared to speak up about these issues. Next question. If you donate to the Just Giving campaign, how will you know that your money is wisely spent? Well, I will publish receipts and blog about it here on my channel. I live stream every Sunday. You can ask me questions live. You can ask questions in the um, comments on videos. If you want evidence that I'm doing that, please just ask. Next, if you have another question that's not answered here, please just post it in the comments on YouTube 
or if you go to my Facebook group, which is Expert Primary Maths Teaching, you'll find the video there. You can ask me pretty much anything there. It's easy to communicate with me. If necessary, message me through that Facebook group. But don't just ask me, ask anyone who works in education. Let's all get talking about this. Final question, who am I and why have I started this campaign? I think I started it because I couldn't see that anyone else was going to and it really matters. I worked at national level in maths education in 2010. I've worked internationally as well. I just love maths education. I love working with children day in, day out and changing their lives by making them confident mathematicians. I want all teachers to have that joy and pleasure. Um, for the last eight years, I've been working in primary schools to try and capture what low floor, high ceiling teaching actually is. I've been sharing that on this YouTube channel because the government have been putting a huge amount of resource into eradicating it and labeling it as being promoted by people who are part of some blob who just let children do what they want. And obviously it isn't that. It's why people came from all over the world to do their PhDs in math education here. It's hugely internationally respected. And also over the last 10 years, I've spent four years as a county councillor in Cumbria, which has given me the chance to work outside of education and really understand that these issues of lack of consultation are just about education. So I've worked extensively in health, trying to sort out major issues in the NHS. And I wrote this book about how you can consult on policy in health locally and at different levels. I've worked on many issues, working with ministers from all parties, including Nadim Zahawi, who wrote me a complex letter about nuclear issues in response to some issues I'd raised with his department, and it was a fair response. So I think I'm probably better than most teachers at putting myself into his shoes and realising the enormity of the problems he's struggling with if he's going to make an improvement in what's happening in schools in terms of policy. And so please believe me that it really matters to support this petition. And if you've got a way of doing that, please use it. A final plea is that over the last 12 years, I've heard pretty much anything said about me because I have stood up and talked about the real world of education. Um, it's not real. I'm just someone who came from one of the most challenging schools in Britain I was lucky enough to get to an ordinary comprehensive school from which I got to Cambridge and I had these amazing three years. And after that, all I wanted to do was to give back to communities like the one I came from and to work to make people's lives better. And maths teaching is an amazing way to do that when we're allowed to do it wisely. If you do want to watch any of my videos on how to teach primary maths, there's one for every topic, and you can find them on my Rebecca the Maths Lady website, listed in order, those videos, with the, all the links so you can go directly to the one you want. I don't make any money off doing this, by the way. It is just a labour of love and a passion and an on cost to me and my family. Thank you so much for watching. Let's build a world of education in which teachers are heard so that children can thrive and that we all love our work in. Take care. Bye for now.